Welcome to What is Going On's Truth in Medicine show. Each month, broadcaster, author, and media consultant Sandy Sedgbeer and naturopathic medical doctor, researcher, and global health educator Dr. Donise Warden bring you the latest news and research from leading edge science and new integrative medicine to help you outsmart cancer, chronic disease, aging, and more. Here's your hosts, Dr. Donise Warden and Sandy Sedgbeer. Hello and welcome back to the Truth in Medicine show. With numerous prestigious scientific and medical establishments confirming that music and sound offer many physical and mental health benefits to humans, Dr. Warden and I are devoting this final show of the year to sharing some solid information and some very practical and powerful sound tools to help you navigate the new year to come. And who better to share how easy it is to harness the power of music, to alleviate illness, reverse negative mindsets, to dissolve our creative blocks, de-stress, and improve our overall health and well-being, then Grammy Award-winning music producer, composer, and musician, Barry Goldstein, author of the best-selling book, The Secret Language of the Heart, How to Use Music, Sound, and Vibration for Healing and Personal Transformation. So, Barry Goldstein, welcome to the show. Well, thank you both for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, before we start, in the interest of transparency, I think we should make it clear <laughs> to our listeners that neither Dr. Ward nor I are strangers to you and your work, Barry. <clears throat> Though I've known you the longest... Dr. Warden does, of course, know you better, having collaborated closely with you, first on some professional projects and more recently on a deeply personal project, which resulted in marriage two years ago. <laughs> so now we've got that little bit out of the way, because I didn't want our <laughs> listeners to think, my goodness, right. those two sound like they know each other if very I well. If called him honey, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or told him to go take the trash out, that would not be good. <laughs> well, and it's hard to believe that I actually did have a professional career before we met as well, just to mention that for so now that we've got that important confession out of the way tell us first what was it that first inspired a successful grammy award-winning producer composer and recording artist to start researching the vibrational effects of music well sandy for me it was all of those things you know that that you talked about go along with a lot of stress So I think most of us, you know, when we reach a point in our careers that we've aspired to, you know, when we become successful in what we're doing, with that comes additional stresses. And, you know, being a type A New Yorker at that time and producing music, um, I was straying away from the love of just songwriting and really enjoying the process to, you know, it it became a job. And I started to lose my love for it. And I knew that, that, you know, that that was going on. And I said, wow, how do I come back to just being in that place of enjoying music again and connecting with my heart again? And I knew I had to move out of the process of the compositional process and really move into a place where things and music were moving through me as opposed to it being a mental um aspect it was needed to move back into the spiritual for me so i began taking these hour-long journeys uh where i would just allow the music to come through me and didn't think anyone would listen to the music that i was creating and then i was encouraged to put these pieces of music out which later became my ambiology series and really the only research behind them at that time was they were all composed at 60 beats per minute because i wanted to target my own heart at a relaxed state and people started to listen to them and I started to getting all these testimonials and um, endorsements of how people were using it and that really created a curiosity for me of why music was working on so many levels and um, at that time is actually when I met Donnie's um, Dr. Warden to our You can call me Donnie on this show. <laughs> Thank you. I think he's in the right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, yeah, and, you know, 
part of my long-term goal was always to reach a more widespread audience and, and move towards um, the medical community with this. So when Danise and I met, she encouraged me to to do more research and to get the lo- the language of science to communicate really to you know larger audiences um, why the music was working in the way that it has. And and I would say uh, to our listeners is that um, you know whenever I first had uh, Barry because I lectured a lot of medical conferences and and I we we started saying he was getting his music into my medicine and I was getting my medicine into his music when I had him lecturing for medical conferences you would see the doctors would start out with their arms folded in front of them like why are we listening to a CME you know continuing medical education lecture on on music we want to hear about the pharmacy and the things that we do and they couldn't see that it was kind of a disconnect but when barry showed them the research he saw showed them the mri changes in the brain what happened with the nervous system autonomic nervous system showed them the science by the end of those conferences it was a beautiful thing to see them sitting there slunched down you know arms in front of them crossed in front and by the end he had them standing up and chanting om shalom home so it was a beautiful thing to give the science first to those like myself that want that research and science side out of the way, and then it could get them into their heart. And it's beautiful. He's, 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 uh, uh, he's great at it, and now he's become a very popular lecturer, and he's even been voted at many of those medical conferences as the most popular uh, lecture that they had. Wow. Well, but, well, you know what I think is interesting uh, about that, too, is – a lot of the things that we lecture on or that I lecture on within those communities are things that we've known spiritually for thousands of years. So part of, you know, my intention was to build those, bridge those two communities, the the scientific and the spiritual communities um, to experience some of the things that we have on a spiritual level, but also the other way around, you know, where the spiritual community really understands the mechanism of what's going on in their bodies when we're listening to music. And I think the two different approaches to it, we need different things. People who are science-based want to hear the science before they allow themselves to take a spiritual journey. They want to know the, the research behind it. And the spiritual community is the other way around. They want to have their experience first, and then they want to embrace the knowledge of why it's happening. So music is a language, and you just really have to adapt that um, to who your audience is in order to bridge it and get them the optimal results, which is basically how can it, how can it influence their physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional bodies in a way that they're changing their health for, for the better. Now, your ambiology music is being used in um, hospitals, hospices, medical offices, as well as by individuals. You know, how did that come about? Was it, was it after you started getting known that people started coming to you, or did you take it to them? Um, you know, with the ambiology series, I really didn't have any expectation. Uh, when I was in the compositional process, but I was in a very open space with my intention, and I really wanted it to serve the highest capacity of healing for each individual that listened to them. And so there's six different CDs, um, and they really, it was a combination of, um, you know, I I call it mush and push. So you move until something Hmm. happens, and you pray until something happens. You know, it's the physical and the spiritual working together. So uh, as more people started using them for, for different things, for sleep, for um, a loved one passing in hospice, for birthing children into the world, you know, I would take those endorsements and let people know about them so that it could help more people um, in using them. So it was really a, a combination of those two. So right. tell us about some of the research, Dr. Warden. You're probably just as knowledgeable as Barry is here with the research that uh, has been uh, released of, of late about some of the physical, the mental, the psychological, and the emotional benefits. Well, well I'm the one at 3 a.m. reading those studies and then throwing it over to Barry and <laughs> let him put it into his presentation. But he's been keeping up with it as well. And interesting, Barry, I think it might be a good time to talk a little bit about what you've got going on with some major um, research centers, cancer hospitals and this and that, where we're actually studying his music. 
Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going, going to name who those are yet. Um, they're, yeah. in, you know, we're, we're still in um, IRBs and reviews with uh, with some of them. But really what's exciting about it is that music's really starting to be recognized within what we're doing in cancer as well. And, you know, there's so many side effects and so many ancillary things that happen in treatment of cancer that music is just a, a safe, um, a cost effective and non-pharmacological way to treat some of these symptoms. And there's, there's studies that are showing everything from uh, nausea, from, from chemotherapy treatments to uh, pain reduction in treating um, in radiation therapy in women who are undergoing mastectomy, um, you know, as well as um, what music is doing to our stress hormones in terms of the cortisol levels and when people are going through these really, you know, chronic degenerative diseases. So music has really been shown as a very cost-effective way to treat all of these and not just, again, it's not just a psychological or emotional, but these are objective findings where we're able to see, you know, cortisol levels, which are our stress hormones, are coming down while people are listening to specific types of music. Um, So I think this is really important because most of the time when people are diagnosed with a chronic disease that they're you know they're in a state of fear and our body is not conducive to being in a healing state when we're in this state as um Denise will tell you you know it's, it's that's the state where we're running from the bear and when our when our body is in this relaxed state where we can recuperate and regenerate and integrate um that's the state that we want to be in for healing and a lot of these studies are really pointing to music as a way that we can do that. Which brings us to symphony of the cells. You know, I have patients that are going in for, um, if they've chosen traditional care and they want chemotherapy, they're afraid. They say how this is going to be damaging my good cells. Or if they've chosen a natural therapy, they're questioning, did I choose the right thing? And so Barry and I collaborated uh, because I had some patients, and one would happen to be a very good friend and a patient, going in for this, and we said, let's let's lay down a meditation. And so why don't you talk about that for a minute, because um, I think that we'll be able to play it uh, right before um, before the break and let people we, yeah. experience it. Why don't you talk about that? Sure. Well, this is, um, you know, this is a perfect example of the science and the spirituality coming together. And with the science part of the music here, we're really um, targeting the heart at a relaxed state, which is 60 beats per minute. It's a composition I did called the Heart Codes, which um, the intention behind that was for people to be able to come back into their heart. We all have our own unique vibration that we experience, and the music is targeted towards having people have a conversation with their heart. And the amazing a verbiage and it was created by Dr. Warden and basically addresses our cells and what's going on in our body in relation to it being a symphony of the cells that we are together serenading. So I, I haven't that, heard um, the one minute phrase. sample yet. <laughs> I haven't even heard well, the one minute little sample, so this will be great. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we have we have a sample now. Let's let's get that mm-hmm. playing now um, yeah. before we go to the break. Yeah. to heal when we allow ourselves to communicate. This can happen when we put ourselves in a safe and relaxed state. Bring your attention back to your breath. 
feel your heartbeat. Visualize your cells twinkling and traveling through the pathways of your body to allow repair. Now is your moment. Close your eyes and take two long, slow breaths. pretty powerful you're listening to what is going arms truth in medicine show and tonight dr warden and i are talking about the healing power of music and sound with grammy award-winning producer composer recording artist and author of the best-selling book the secret language of the heart barry goldstein we'll be back with some sound tools for navigating the new year with barry goldstein after the break The future of Internet Radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Change and growth are part of natural life and also part of your spiritual life. Everyone needs support and guidance, especially during life passages. Upgrade yourself with the Ohm Times Experts program. With Ohm Times Experts, you have access to the best intuitive coaches, spiritual teachers, counselors, astrologists, and oracles. Our team was carefully selected so you can trust. Find out more at experts.ohmtimes.com. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Some knowledge belongs to us and us alone. The way our girlfriends walk, talk, touch their hair. Details that only a sister can know about her girls. But what about our other girls? The ones we carry with us every day. Our bond with our sister girls gives life. But knowing your breasts can save it. Go to knowyourgirls.org for the facts you need on breast health. Brought to you by Susan G. Coleman and the Ad Council. Welcome back. Barry Goldstein, we've been hearing a lot hearing a lot lately about coherence, heart and brain coherence. Tell us a bit about that. What is it and why do why is it, you know, good for us to have coherence between the heart and the brain? Well, I mean, when we're looking at the heart, coherence is really geared towards bringing our heart into smooth orderly rhythms. And it's really moving into emotional states that are related to elevated states of emotion, such as kindness, compassion, um, love. What they've shown in studies is that when we are in those states of emotion and we're slowing our breathing down, that our heart moves into these orderly rhythms that really is like a conductor for the rest of our body. So when our heart is slowing down and we're moving toward these orderly rhythms, our systems are run more, more more effectively in the body. And so the brain can do that as well, and we can slow down our brain waves so that we're not constantly in a high beta state where we're experiencing stresses, for instance. So we have the ability to slow down our heart and the tempo of our heart, and we also have the ability to slow down our brain and move into more coherent brain states. And it's really um, to have more optimal functions in our body, in our thought process, and what's going out to the body. What we're learning more about, Sandy and Sandy, is that they're very much interrelated. So when we're moving to these optimal 
heart states, for example, there was a recent study that showed when we're moving into heart coherence that we are producing more alpha brain waves, which is a slower brain wave state that is associated with relaxation and it's also associated with our creativity as well. So, and the other way around, when we're slowing our brain waves down and we're calming down, it induces our breathing mechanism to slow down as well, and our heart rate also slows down with it. So you can't really affect one without affecting the other, and what we're beginning to study more is how we can affect one with the other. So different people resonate, and some people are more heart-centered, some people are more mind-centered. And it's really about finding that balance of using your heart's intelligence, which is really your intuition, your innate ability to um, know when something doesn't feel right, and combining that with your brain intelligence, which is acquiring wisdom and it's doing diligence, you know, using both of those in your decision-making processes and your life challenges as well, and, and that really increases your optimal states of emotion, um, your spiritual connection, it also affects your body as well. I did a consultation this morning with a young woman in her 40s, mother of three, recently diagnosed with um, both breasts, having breast cancer. And so she was in probably one of her, she was past the, the you know, the initial uh, diagnosis, and now she's, you know, talking, looking into what kind of treatments and options that she had. But she was most concerned that she was stressed, and she knew that was bad for her. And I said, you know, there's a time and a place, and the body is really wise. I said, at this point, studies show that you being stressed in the initial moment of the diagnosis is actually protecting your body. It's okay, but being stressed doesn't mean that those orderly rhythms that Barry is talking about isn't there, the heart and the brain. We can still be in stress mode and produce hormones that allow us to say, there's something wrong, I need to take care of it, and it jump starts the immune system. It gets things going in the body to say, I've got something going on here that I'm going to have to pay attention to, but it's the long-term stresses. It's the long term, not this short term initial diagnosis. That's when it really starts having a problem for us. But the beauty of music, being able to balance the brain and the heart, and you know our knee bone is connected to our shin bone. Anybody over 50 knows that song. Everything is connected. And at some point we need to trust that the body will do the best that it can do if we can get ourselves into that state, and that's where music comes in. Yeah, and that's so also when your you... internal music comes in as well. So right. I, I think it's also how we look at what music is, you know, a, a reconnection and how to, a question that people ask is, well, how do I get in these heart coherent states and how do I slow my brain down? And I think, you know, one of the things with that is, is what I call our internal music or our, our internal symphony and our heartbeat and our breath. And, you know, music's a language and, we have to, if we want to be more heart-centered and release those stresses, we have to start talking to our hearts as opposed to our brain. And a way to do that, a simple way, every day is by placing your hands on your heart and closing your eyes. And studies have shown even when we're just closing our eyes and we're moving inward and placing our hands on our heart that our brain waves are slowing down. You know, so if we begin to have a conversation again with our heart where we're listening, we're hearing our breath and we can be in a place of gratitude for each breath and for the sound of our heartbeat, then when we start to listen to music, we appreciate it at a, at a whole new and a deeper level. Are you finding, Dr. Alden, now that you, um, when you have patients like the one you just described, that you mm -hmm. uh, give them music to take home with them to help them that's one of their prescriptions because the yeah. first thing they've got to be able to make their decisions in a rational mind and in a mind that's not running from the bear and in complete fear and saying someone please save me but i don't trust that doctor and i don't like the sound of chemotherapy if they're going to choose it they need to choose it with a with an education and with a knowledge that they have chosen that their intuition that barry's talking about being able to tap into knowing what you feel 
is the best treatment for you. It might not be the best treatment for someone else. And I'm a big believer that what you trust and you believe in is going to be the best therapy. It may not be what I would have personally chosen. But our body's own chemistry, our body's own power, the chemicals and the molecules that we make, that's why you know, we did this CD about talking to your own cells and believing in them and understanding that they've got an innate intelligence and, and being able to get yourself into that state. And another way, besides music and with music, is um, our furry friends um, and, and the pet therapies and what happens there. So I know, Sandy, you had a question about for Barry about uh, what he's got going on with his Pet Wave series because I think it's a good time to talk about it because I tell patients that too. Say, do you have an animal? Yeah. Do you love, you know, that's, that's, that's a big piece as well. Well, you know what? I love it when we find that something is working with our pets because yes. it's not mind over matter. We know that, you know, it's not the placebo right. effect. If it's working with them, right. then something is really going That's on. Right. So, so tell us about your pet wave music and what's happening with cats and dogs. Yeah, well, I mean, I call Worry Woody, not Worry Woody. Uh, is my, like, he's my he's my furry muse. So, you know, Woody really inspired um, the series. Although um, before we got Woody, I, I had a lot of people who were listening to my Ambiology series and told me that their pets loved the Ambiology series. There was uh, there was a lady in Chicago whose dog literally used to wait by the CD player every morning that they had in their kitchen. And the dog was really, really sick. And when he would listen to the music, he would calm down and started waiting for it. So I knew that, um, that there was a way to help our furry friend with music. And we, um, we decided to adopt Woody. I started composing this piece of music to welcome Woody into our home. And it was at a slower tempo um, because the, actually the heart rate of dogs are, depending on the size of the dog, are similar to ours but not exact. And the tones are different. So I don't use a lot of tones that have impact or attack on them. So it's very long, soothing tones, and it's really geared towards bringing um, the, the our furry friends to a relaxed state as well. But really it was designed as a bonding program. And uh, HeartMath did some really interesting studies that show that our heart rate variabilities and our pets' heart rate variabilities are linked. So they measured that when um, a master or, you know, the, the person who owns a dog comes into a room, the, the animal's heart rate is affected by the master just walking into the room. And when the master shows love, their heart rates synchronize together and move to this coherence that we're talking about. So really the, the aim for pet waves was to be able to experience that with your animal because they show us so much unconditional love. And they pick up on a lot of our energies. When we're stressed out, they're stressed out. So when we brought Woody into our home, we played pet waves for him. And literally within the first few moments of it, he went belly up, which is the trust position, and we started showing Woody, you know, a love and we're rubbing his stomach and, you know, he was like in seventh heaven with us <laughs> and the music and, and just being loved. And we started using that to condition him into our home. Um, so whenever we would leave, we would put the pet waves on and him getting accustomed to it. And to this day, when I put that music on, he recognizes it and will move into a much calmer state. Um, so with that, we started sharing it, and it's being used in kennels, and it's being used in shelters. And um, it's just really amazing the stories of, of people telling us that they're, they use it when they take their dogs on trips um, and what it's really doing for them as well in terms of increasing that ability to feel that unconditional love because they're just in a better emotional state with their pets. And Sandy, well, in those shelters, the dog and the cat sides are actually competitively fighting over the CDs. And that's when Barry yeah. said, okay, I've got to make one for cat. And then right, he said, well, what right, am I, exactly. I got to study cat. 
And it's interesting that the frequency that we use with PEMF and other electronic devices that in traditional medicine even are used to help heal bones that aren't healing after a broken bone to heal it, those particular frequencies are in the cat's purr. And that Barry had a way of harmonizing, incorporating that into the cat CD. And it's the same way. So is it going to help our bones? I don't, you know, I don't think I can make that statement, but I think it's possible because we know what those frequencies do. And is it going to get into the, you know, let the cat be in that uh, resonance to be able to know it's in a safe purring place? So he's done some amazing things that no one else has done with these CDs. Wow, that that's that is absolutely fascinating. We've got a okay. clip of um, one of them. I don't know, is it the dog piece? Um, this is that, uh, I'd for like for dogs. Yes. Okay, let's have a listen to that piece. A challenge to incorporate the frequencies into a piece of music when you're aiming it at a dog or a cat you know I mean is it more challenging than when you're creating something for human consumption um you know I don't think so Sandy I mean for me um it's all part of like a recipe really you know and when I listen to that piece of music you know myself as well I could remember the state that I'm in more so than the frequencies I use. You know, once they're once I get them in and they're harmonizing with it, um, with what I'm, whatever I'm doing, it's really smooth sailing, and I just try to really be in that state that I'm intending, that I'm aiming at, which is in that um, specific piece, it's love, you know, and it's just this unconditional love for 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 Woody, and um, so I think it's a combination, you know, of of composition, it's a combination of the frequencies, it's a combination of the intention, it's a combination of the tempo, and it's not one you know, or the other that makes it a powerful thing. It's all of them together. And um, I, I always say it's kind of like grandma's meatballs. You know, you can have this recipe, but it doesn't taste exactly like grandma's because she had a secret ingredient in there, which was she wasn't going exactly by the recipe. She was going by her instinct and putting her love into it. And she was seeing her family being fed by it right, and, and being in a happy state of what that was going to feel like for it. And that went into the recipe. And it's really the same thing with me. You know, I think intention is such a strong part of the effect that people are going to have when they listen to it. The emotional state that the composer is in when he's composing is so important. Mm. So I I think it's really a combination. You know, Sandy, when Barry was telling me that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, it's a very affecting piece. I mean, I found it incredibly relaxing. Yes, yes. And when Barry was telling me about, you know, how he's creating music and how he he knew that his intention when he was in that space, when he was creating it, made it different because it it made sense because when I use cold lasers in medicine 
and I could use a certain frequency for a certain disease or a certain state, right? And then my medical students would come and say, you know, Dr. Warden, we're using the same frequency as the same device, and we're not getting the effect you are. And I'd say, what were you thinking about when you were treating that patient? Were you thinking about lunch, about the fight you had with your boyfriend? Or were you in that moment with that patient? What was your patient thinking about? What were you talking about? Where was your and your patient's intention? That is the difference in the recipe of getting patients better. Same thing with music. When you're working with these subtle energies and these frequencies, um, the intention of the person that's, that's applying that or allowing that for you is, I, in my opinion, most important, not the frequency, what the intention is behind it. Right. And animals, I mean, and our pets so pick up yeah. on that. You know, they <laughs> they can feel that, you know, more than we can. And like Woody, you know, when he hears that piece and going belly up in the first, you know, 15 seconds we had him in our home is because they know. And they know where we are as well. So as you said, Sam, you're in a relaxed state with it. And that's the whole idea. You know, if you can move into a relaxed state, your furry family member is going to move into that state. You know, with you, and um, we help each other. You know, Woody um, always mm-hmm. gives us so much unconditional love and humor, and we laugh with him. And it's such an important part. Uh, he's such an important part of our family. So, and um, clearly, part of your band. <laughs> right. That's right. Well, exactly. and, I, t- and, and, I tell and, him all and, the money and, from the CDs we're going to be making <laughs> goes to his chicken fund. You know. So, <laughs> That's um, <right. laughs> So organic he's leaving his legacy. But yeah, really, yeah. I mean, I feel like Woody's leaving his legacy through me as well yes. because, you know, even when I hear that, is what we're, what we're discovering as well, like in Alzheimer's patients, you know, is that they music has the ability to trigger what we call autobiographical memories. So when we hear a piece of music and it brought us happiness, right, in Alzheimer's patients, that's giving them the ability to memorize to bring memories that they normally wouldn't have had. Mm-hmm. But, and, and for me, when I hear that piece of music, it brings an autobiographical memory to me as well. And it brings me into a state of love that I was feeling in that moment. So music can be used in that same way, you know, with our pets as it is being used for Alzheimer's patients. And that's, that's really exciting. That is exciting. You're listening to What Is Going On with Truth in Medicine show. I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, and this month Dr. Donnie Warden and I are discussing the healing power of sound with Grammy Award winning producer, composer, researcher and author Barry Goldstein. Still to come, creating your own sound tours for navigating the new year. Edge of Conscious Radio, Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. It only takes a minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. And you can do it at doihaveprediabetes.org. But you're probably not going to, are you? Kids, work, listening to the radio. You're busy, which is great because busy people can't get prediabetes. Oh my, I read that wrong. (laughs) They can. Should have worn my glasses. So visit doihaveprediabetes.org and take a short test because prediabetes can be reversed. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. Welcome back. Barry Goldstein, sound tools for navigating the new year. First of all, why would we want them? 
And what are they? How do we create them? Well, I think it's just like anything else. You want to be able to create a program that you're going to have some consistency with. So just like we know meditation is helpful, but if we don't have a meditation program where we're doing it, you know, on a daily basis, it's not going to have as much impact. The same thing with our nutrition and our diets. If we're not, if we don't have a program, it's not going to be consistent. And it's the same with music. We all have these random experiences where we're like, oh my God, that piece of music was amazing. But we don't have to leave it to it being random. Ultimately, we can all become the DJs of our own lives and not have to wait to have those experiences. So really, what, is, what I always suggest for people who are starting their own programs is to think of it as you would your, your daily meals or your nutrition where you bring food into your body. What music are you bringing into your body as well and what, into your being? So if you start with the concept that music is a bridge and it's going to take us from one place to another, if you start your morning and ask yourself, well, what mood am I in this morning and where do I want to go? So if you're in a relaxed state, but you need to move to a motivated state because you have a big important meeting where you're going to be leading it, you might want to start your day off with something up and, you know, having a lot of rhythm in it. But if you're waking up stressed, you might want to start your day with a piece of music that's more relaxing. So think of that piece of music in the morning as like your breakfast. You're breaking the fast of having not heard anything um, up until that moment from waking from sleep. And then your second piece of music that you can incorporate into your day would be during or your lunch where you sometimes start to wander away from your intentions or something happened in your day where you feel like you have gotten off your path. It could be, you know, you had an argument with an employee or you had a situation in traffic. So picking a piece of music that's going to bring you back to your heart center is going to rejuvenate you. Just like when you eat your lunch, you're energizing your body to move into a place where you can be productive. I like to use a piece of music, you know, during the middle of my day, that's going to create that momentum for me. And then in the evening, when you're winding down at night, you know, it's always great to have music that's going to transition and allow you to calm down a little bit from your busy day, you know, into your evening. So I have a, a piece of music from the Ambiology series called Genesis that's great for moving into sleep and bridging your day into night. And if our listeners um, start their music program by just those three times of day, and from there know that they can develop their own playlists that target specific emotions, um, like creating a playlist for gratitude. You know, for me, I have a song in there by Sly and the Family Stone, Thank You for Letting Me Be Myself. And, you know, we all know what playlists are. We all have these technologies. But when we start to group them to target specific emotions, we can really be the conductor of how our day goes. We don't have to let it snowball into one of those days. Um, so that's a great starting point for people to incorporate into their new year. I would think, given how much upheaval, you know, the world has been going through these past few years, that it's probably more important than ever to uh, be able to become the conductor of your life and not get swayed by, you know, the news or different emotions coming from other people, etc. It's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, and, and it doesn't take long, you know, it doesn't take long for us to come back home to our hearts and our purpose. Hmm. And I think a great way to, to feel that for our listeners, you know, I mean, I, I know you work, you know, you've worked with Shirley MacLaine, Neil Donald Walsh, Greg Braden, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Amen, and they understand the importance of the work that you're doing. But for those of us not quite ready to go to bed tonight, and we want to feel that igniting that you're talking about for the, you know, the time of day when you want to get that energy back underneath you. It might be a great time uh, for you, Mary, to introduce us to Ignite the Heart. Tell us a little bit about that, and let's listen and feel that one. Sure. Sure. So this is from a new CD. It's um, called Ignite the Heart 2. I had a previous album called Ignite the Heart, and it was 
people loved it so much I created um, a second CD. But it, it's really geared towards that aspect of our heart that's passionate, that is courageous, and it's great for the creative spark. So a lot of times when we're talking about heart coherence or coming home to the heart, we view it in a very soft and mushy type of love. But there's also that part of the heart that creates boundaries that really, you know, ignites the creative energy. So ignite the heart too. And this specific piece is geared towards really sparking that heart and fanning the flames of your heart. So while you listen to it, create an intention for yourself of something that you would like to create in your new year and plant the seed of it now before new year's. And for listeners who are listening afterwards, after new year's plant that seed for your intentions, where whatever time it may be while you're listening to this. So let's, let's see if we can get that music sample on from ignite the heart. It's quite different. Um, I'd like to know what Woody does when he hears that one. <laughs> ah, Woody, Woody moment, loves that. Snoring right beside me. <laughs> so that's, show, that's a piece he cool. knows I'm excited and talking. And he literally comes in, turns <laughs> down, and he's at the moment. <laughs> so that piece is called Inferno, you know, and it's really about sometimes yeah. we have to light that flame in our heart, you know, yeah. and, and really strike it and ignite it. Very, very aptly named. Um, so tell us about some of the work that you're doing with um, people like um, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden, Anita Mujani, I love her work, Dr. Daniel Amen, and also with the Monroe Institute. Yeah, so the Monroe Institute and I will be developing some, some products together this year, um, and that's, that's really exciting. They, Monroe is one of the first people and the originator of binaural beats that were that were put out there for over 20 years with Robert Monroe and I just love uh, love Monroe because they do everything with a lot of quality and dignity to it so keep your eyes out and open for new uh, projects we're doing this year um, together and um, Anita Morjani and I are releasing a new CD in February um, that is um, it's right around the same time as her initial near-death experience that she had, which is in February. And um, it's actually taking the listener on their own near-death experience and actually getting the knowledge of what Anita had on her experience with, of course, not having to actually physically die to do that. <laughs> so it's a, it's a beautiful CD. And... Um, we're, we're really looking forward to that. She's so wonderful to, to work with. And everything that you hear and see about Anita, like online and, and you see her, is she's exactly the same. She's just a beautiful, beautiful person. Genuine. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very genuine. And uh, Daniel Amen and I, it's, it's interesting, you know, that I'm dancing kind of both in the spiritual world and the scientific yeah. world. And Daniel, Daniel and I have done uh, a program that is called Feel Better Fast and Make It Last. And um, what's exciting about that is really helping people in terms of get, moving into heart and brain coherence as we were talking before. Um, so it's, it's really groundbreaking technology and using the heart and the brain together through music. And we've actually, um, we're on Billboard's top 10 charts uh, with both of our CDs 
um, right now as we're speaking. So it's great that it's moving to a more um, widespread audience and, and crossing over into mainstream, which is where I really feel the next steps are in terms of, you know, getting the healing aspects of music out there on a larger scale. And, um, and that program, great, great. Uh, last year you developed one for PBS. It's the number one PBS show. And this year you're on track to do the same thing with the second program. So people can look for and watch PBS to see what um, Barry is doing with Dr. Amy. Absolutely. And he and Dan, Daniel Amon, we could do a whole interview on his work, but he's really a pioneer in how we look at the brain and not just um, prescribing meds, but looking at the physical brain. And um, I'm also working, um, continuing my work with Dr. Joe Dispenza, who is, I think, one of the greatest teachers out there um, at this time. And, you know, we've done a lot of collaborations, everything from working with your energy centers and your chakras to walking meditations. And this year we're also coming out with shorter meditations for people with sleeping challenges and one for children as well. And um, I'm in the process of completing a CD with Greg Braden, who not that many people know um, is a, a unbelievable flute player as well. And that's combining Greg's flute, my ambient music, as well as um, spoken word within it that's really beautiful um, to connect with the ancestors through. So that's uh, some of it. It's so interesting because, um, you know, the, there was a time when a lot of your work was with um, spiritual teachers who were very, very deeply embedded in the spiritual arena. And now we see the more mainstream coming in with Dr. Eamon, Joe Dispenza, Greg Braden, etc. And it all seems to be... Um, it's almost like it's it's no longer one or the other. It's just becoming a fluid, um, you know, a scene, so to speak, where uh, it's accepted on all sides. Yeah, I, well, I think it's kind of like a melting pot of everything that mm. I've done is kind of is kind of moving into, you know, an easy an easier flow. And really, the next steps for me are going to be incorporating um, my pop background and my film background and really creating music um, that is with intention and embedded with frequencies for film and TV. So well, stay you tuned. Say a little bit about the documentary we just completed on PTSD oh, yeah. and that you scored that. Yeah. Well, um, both Benice and I were um, expert speakers on a movie called Light in the Darkness, and it's really bringing light to um, PTSD and how um, different modalities can assist people with PTSD. And uh, I did a score for the music for that, but at the same time, the intention was for people who are watching that CD to have the healing energy of the music actually work with them and treat them within watching the movie. And uh, I think that's going to be a big part of film too and music is that not we're not just scoring for it but we're also creating an experience with the music that can be beneficial um, to a person and the marriage of visual of sound of color you know weaving a tapestry for people to have these unbelievable experiences that make them more curious about things like meditation and relaxation and how music can be used so um, it's called Light in the Darkness, and it's really a, a, a great, beautiful, full-length documentary. Produced by a first-time uh, producer and uh, director, and they did an amazing job. It's won, I forgot how many laurels now. Um, Barry, do you remember how many laurels it's up to? Which means, you know, the film festivals are giving it yes. um, the thumbs up yeah. and allowing it to be presented. There are several. Yeah, I think it's, it's yeah, it's almost ten. I think at this point, and yeah. it's starting to yeah. go national, national as well. And it's a, yeah. a London film festival as we're speaking. So, yeah. well, I love the idea that you know everything now. Um, it's been a long time coming, but there is so much science now behind all of this. I love the idea of walking into a doctor's office one day, and instead of being offered a, you know, a, a drug. I'm given a CD. <laughs> How cool would well, that be? Well, right? that, that happens all the time in my office. Thank you for sleep challenges. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, the Genesis, that really brought us together. <laughs> yeah. 
that worked and that's that right. be and how I saw it helping my patients. How many guys can say that they won their their partner over by putting them to sleep? See that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what Stephen Sinatra calls what what I'm doing as acousticeuticals, you know, instead of nutraceuticals, acousticeuticals, yes. and I think that's really where it's going. Yeah. And I think as we improve on the research as well that's coming out, and we get even more and more specific with the genres and you know volumes and protocols and preferred music, you know, we're really going to start to very accurately be able to prescribe music for individuals. And I don't think it's too long coming. I think it's it's right around mm. the corner. I agree with you. Unfortunately, we're almost out of time now. So we're going to have to say thank you and goodbye to you, Barry. And good luck. Not that it sounds as though you're going to need it because everything <laughs> seems to be going really well. But thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, you for both having me and for all you're doing. Yeah. And, you and if you're interested in his work, go uh, ahead. His no, you go ahead. Visit.com. Can you just say that again, BarryGoldsteinMusic.com? Yeah, BarryGoldsteinMusic.com. I... Okay. We had a little delay there, but we're not going to have any in the new year, right? We want to wish everyone a happy and yes. healthy new year and use music. It's some of the best medicine we've got. Okay. I'll second that. <laughs> I'll third that. Happy New happy Year, everybody. Happy New Year. 